Good morning. It's day nine here in the Gilbertson Airplane Factory. Uh, at least day nine of, of building airplane parts. Um, so I have two rudder skins, um, and I'll explain why when I show you how I messed each of them up a little bit and what I'm going to do to fix it. That'll be the, the focus of, of what I'm doing today. Um, and then when I'm done with that, I'll move on to non-airplane building part stuff. Um, I've got some wood so I can build cradles to hold uh, things like the horizontal stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer and whatnot when I begin riveting those. Um, other than that, uh, airplane building is a challenge. Thank goodness there are so many resources for uh, Vans Aircraft Builders. Um, anyways, let's get to it. Stay tuned. Here I have two, not one, but two rudder skins for my Vans RV8 build. The one on the left was the one that was originally sent with my kit. And then the one on the right is, or was a replacement. The one on the left was damaged in shipping. The corners up here were bent and you can see where I worked to flatten the bend out. That one doesn't look very bad. Uh, this one was a bit worse and it's a bit wavy. Vans Aircraft said that, that this was fine <clears throat> that I'd be able to use a hand seamer, excuse me, hand seamer to flatten those out and it wasn't a big deal, but it was a brand new kit and I didn't want to start off working with damaged parts. So they did send a replacement. So in that sense, I had a little bit of safety early on in the build. If I screwed something up, I have a backup and guess what? I screwed something up. So I began working with the clean new rudder skin. Um, just to recap, uh, if you're unfamiliar, this part of the process involves putting in all of these stiffeners. This is the trailing edge of the rudder, so this will end up being closed up, tightened up. So placing all of these stiffeners riveted in, obviously, um, you want a smooth surface, so all of these skins are dimpled so that you can use flush head rivets that drop down the holes and um, rivet these pieces together. During the dimpling process on this skin, uh, it was going fairly well until, let's see if I can get it in focus here, right there. It's hard to get a read on that, but basically I missed the spot on this one and created like a little figure eight dimple that's not usable. Uh, there's a way to overcome that, but I decided I've got another skin. <laughs> Let's flatten out those corners and see how this goes. So um, I used a different method for um, dimpling this skin used the same device. I just used it differently and I had better results and I didn't have one of these things uh, occur right here. So then it was time to uh, install the stiffeners. Rivet all of those into place. And for the most part, this wasn't bad. Um, on this side of the trailing edge, remember this is the, the rudder. So this is actually this is the back, the airplane goes that way. Um, this went okay, except I did have one ugly boo-boo down here that does kind of stand out on camera. This is a rivet that I tried to drive um, when it wasn't over the uh, back riveting plate. So more about back riveting later, but basically that's what happened. So it's cosmetic. Um, I had to drill it out and then reset it, but I ended up with that Audi kind of thing. This side of it, uh, back riveting, was a little more difficult because, let's take a look inside. Once all of these stiffeners on this side were in place, trying to back rivet the two innermost uh, rivets 
with this in the way um, became pretty challenging and I was worried about opening up this bend too much to get room for the rivet gun in there. And so I decided on several of these that I had to, um, rather than back riveting, just had to uh, buck these. And I didn't do a very good job on a few of them. Came out really ugly. If, if the uh, rivet gun gets away from you, if you're not holding it steadily enough with enough pressure against it'll skip on you and give you this and this and those are just ugly so what i've decided to do is that the, the next stage in this process is to put the final bend into the trailing edge right here using this um, device that i built yesterday it'll sandwich the trailing edge in there and put the work on getting that bend correct. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the bend on this one, knowing that I'm actually not going to end up using this rudder because I think that these, this is an accumulation of too many errors here. So I'm not going to use this rudder skin. Um, I'm going to do the repair on the bad dimple on this rudder skin and I've reordered the stiffeners, which aren't very expensive. Um, I'll redo the stiffeners and do that, having the practice of making the bend on this one. So, yeah, that's what's happening today. Okay, here's an update on the boogered up hole dimple on the rudder skin. Let's see here. The original hole was right there in the middle. And you can see that when I was dimpling it, I kind of flinched a little bit and got just off of the hole and created a little figure eight. That hole's no good. The solution is to put a doubler behind it, which I'll show you in a moment, and then create two new holes as part of that doubler that split the difference between the original hole and the other ones down the line, assuming that you can maintain a proper edge distance, which you can. So, uh, on the inside, this is what it looks like for now. Note there's no stiffener in place, but that's the doubler in place uh, made out of 32 thousandths uh, all clad aluminum sheet. And it was a success. So I got to do a little bit of fabrication from the extra, you know, piles of aluminum that they give you. This was first attempt at that doubler, but uh, right here, but you can see that the, the drill bit wandered a little bit on me when I went to drill the holes, so I didn't like it. So I remade it and that's that. Okay, so what's going on here is at the bottom of the rudder, uh, you need to fabricate some attached strips that will um, ultimately be used to attach the fiberglass fairing that goes uh, to the bottom of the rudder. Um, it's not very difficult to do, but it is pretty satisfying for somebody who's never done anything like this uh, before to get to um, completely fabricate a piece, even a simple piece out of uh, some scrap uh, or spare aluminum, um, one for each side of the rudder. Uh, I went ahead and did this uh, while I was uh, fabricating the little doubler to fix the messed up hole. So this is the um, the rudder skin that I'm not going to use. And like I said, I was going to practice making the bend. I built that bending brake, uh, sort of modifying the instructions based on something that I read on Vans Air Force. Uh, the The plans show you setting it up with those <clears throat> with those two boards laying flat but if you set them tall and bolt it to the table you get a lot more leverage uh, and it does take a lot of force to get that bend to come down in the foreground you can see the root rib and that's the angle that you're ultimately trying to get that down to um, where it sort of relaxes into that position so uh, good practice and here i'm getting work on trying to figure out the assembly of the rudder skeleton uh, the bottom of it the the rudder brace um, is sort of like a Chinese puzzle 
And uh, I think for the rest of this video, I'm pretty much sitting there reviewing the plans and, um, you know, trying to figure out what to do next. I, there's really not much more that I can do beyond this, uh, waiting for the rudders, um, stiffeners to come in to go back to the original skin. But uh, I left this bit of research and boring stuff in because this is actually a pretty common and important part of the build process, especially early on when you're still learning how to speak the language uh, that's on the page in front of you. Um, I can say, thankfully, that uh, in the past few months, my frequency of errors has gone down significantly and the rudder is complete, but it is in fact a saga that will come up many more times before we get to completion. So that's it for this one. Uh, I think we go back to the horizontal stabilizer in the next video.